Hey everyone, it's Chaz. Hope you're ready for some more Leak Code because in this video, we're going to look at Leak Code Problem 322 Coin Change. So I'm going on with my webcam, so I'm just going to leave it off in this video. So let's look at the problem statement. It says you are given an integer array coins representing coins of different denominations and an integer amount or the target amount representing a total amount of money. And our job is to return the fewest number of coins that you need to make up that amount. And if that amount of money cannot be made up by any combination of the coins, we should return negative one. And they also tell us that we have an infinite number of each kind of coin. Now, at this point, the solution for me would be to just take the infinite number of coins and leave, but that's just me. So we'll just solve the problem instead. So they give us some examples. So here is an array with coins with values 1, 2, and 5. We have a target value of 11. You can see just by kind of looking at it that you can make this several different ways. Like you can go 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, and then 1. You can just do 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, like 11 of them. But the best way would be to go 5, 5, and 1. That adds up to 11, and that's three coins, so you output three. The next example, we only have one coin of a value 2. Well, we have an infinite number of them, but the only value we have is 2. We're trying to make the amount 3, and that's impossible. If you only have 2 cent coins, you can only make 2, 4, 6, 8. You can only make even numbers. And the target amount is an odd number, so therefore it is impossible. The problem says, if you have an impossible situation, then return negative 1. And so our output here is just negative 1. And then this third example, we're given a coin value, but it really doesn't matter in this case because the target amount is 0. It's not impossible. It actually is possible to make 0 cents. It requires 0 coins. And so we output 0. And now we'll look at the constraints, coins.length or basically the number of coins that we have to work with, or the number of different values of coins, that's going to be between 1 and 12 inclusive. So we will have at most 12 different values for the coins. And then coins at index i, or the value of any individual coin, will be somewhere between 1 and 2 to the 31st minus 1. Or in other words, it will be a positive value that fits into an int, or an integer. And that's fine for us. We're not going to actually try to add these coins together in our solution, so we don't have to worry about any integer overflows. So being restricted by integer.max value, basically, is fine for us. And then the last constraint, that's going to be the important one. It says that the amount, the target amount itself, will be between 0 and 10,000. And that's great for us, because if that amount were unrestricted, or if it were, say, integer.max value, like, 2.1 billion, that would be a huge problem for us because we would actually run out of memory. And that's because the technique we're going to use is going to require us to calculate not just this target amount, but all of the amounts before that amount as well, all of the smaller values leading up to that amount. So if we had to deal with integer.max value, then we would definitely run out of memory. So since it's only 10,000, we'll be okay. Some of you already know I'm currently in Amazon Technical Academy, and what we're going through right now is some different problem-solving solutions, and the one we are reviewing this week is known as the greedy method. And so because I happen to be doing this video that same week, some of you who are following the program might be wondering, should I use greedy to solve the coin change problem? So first of all, what is that? So in the greedy method, you build up a solution piece by piece, always choosing the next piece that offers the most immediate benefit. So, for example, if I take example 1 from Leet Code, the coins 1, 2, and 5, and the target amount of 11, a greedy solution would say, go big or go home. Just pick the biggest coin. Biggest coin is 5, and let's add that into our solution. So we're using a 5 coin, and then what should we do next? Go big or go home. Pick the 5 again. We're choosing the coin that offers the most immediate benefit. Well, for us, the most immediate benefit would be to get as close to the target amount as possible. And the way to get close to it is to just keep picking the biggest coin. So now we have two five coins. And then what do we do next? Go big or go home. Choose the, f oh wait, we can't choose the five. The five is too big. All right, well, go slightly big or go home. Choose the next biggest one. Well, the two cent coin is not going to work either because that puts us over the target. So, okay, fine. We'll just pick the one. And so we end up with two five coins and a one coin. That does add up to 11. And in fact, this is the optimal solution. But let me show you a different example. I'm going to give you a set of coins, 1, 3, and 4, with a target amount of 6. 
if we use a greedy problem solving method in this case, then we're going to choose the four. That'll get us to four cents, and then we can't choose another four, we can't choose a three, so we'll choose a one, and then I guess another one. So we'll end up with four, one, and one. The greedy algorithm tells us that three coins are required. However, that's actually not true, because what we can do instead is skip the four and just use the three coin twice. And when you do that, it adds up to six, and instead of using three coins, we manage to do it in only two coins. So greedy is not gonna work. We need to find another way. So we're gonna use something known as the dynamic programming method. Sometimes you will see this abbreviated as just DP, but the dynamic programming method says to break the problem down into smaller subproblems and store the results so that we don't have to calculate them again. Now, sometimes this will be slower than greedy, but in the case of our current problem, it's going to find the correct answer rather than finding a good answer that isn't necessarily the best one. So say, for example, for this problem, I had a target amount of six cents. So what I would do with dynamic programming is create an array of size seven. And I want to create an array of size seven because I want the amount six to appear at index six of the array. And if I have index six, that means my array is size seven. And instead of immediately figuring out the answer for the target amount of six, I'll instead figure out the answer for a target amount of zero. And then based on that, I'll figure out the target amount of one. Based on that, I'll figure out two and three and four and five until I reach the target amount of six. And then whatever answer is here, that's the one I'm gonna return. All right, I don't have a lot of time today, so instead of doing animations, I'm gonna show you this one on paper. Hope you don't mind. What I did here was I made myself a little chart showing the amount of money that I'm trying to get, like the number of cents, and the number of coins that is required to reach that amount. And I'm gonna do this for a target amount of six cents. So that means I'm gonna need... Zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six cents here. And I'm just going to figure out the number of coins required to reach that value, the optimal number of coins. I'm using this other page here to keep notes for myself because I'm going to need to try to use different coins to reach that target amount. And the coins I have, I've got a one cent coin, a three cent coin, and a four cent coin. And I also want you to notice that I'm looking for the target amount of six, but notice that I do have seven elements here because I have to include the zero. Now, first of all, let's figure out the number of coins needed to make the amount of zero cents. Well, I can't use any of these coins to make zero cents. In order to make zero cents, we need zero coins. That's going to be our base case. For now, we're going to treat zero as a special case and say that when the amount is zero, we require zero coins. Now let's determine how to form one cent and we're going to try each of these three coins so we ask is it possible to make one cent using this one cent coin well yes of course it is we can do it by starting with zero cents and then adding a single one cent coin or in other words the way i'm thinking of this is i'm saying to make one cent i need to use one coin plus whatever coins i needed for zero cents or one plus zero so to make one cent using a one cent coin requires one coin. Now let's ask, can we make one cent using a three cent coin? No, we can't. So let's just say no. And can we make one cent using a four cent coin? No. So we'll say no. So the number that goes here is going to be the minimum of these three values. I only have one valid value. I only have the one. So that's going to be my answer. The minimum number of coins required to make one cent is one coin, just this one. Now let's figure out the number of coins required to make two cents. So let's go through these again. We're gonna ask, can I make two cents with a one cent coin? Yes, but only if I already have one cent, and then I can add an additional one cent coin for a total of two. Or in other words, to make two cents, I can use this one coin plus whatever number of coins I needed to make one cent, or one plus one, and so that is two. Now let's try the three cent coin. Can I make two cents using a three cent coin? No. Can I make two cents using a four cent coin? No. The number that goes here is gonna be the smallest value on this row, and right now there's only one value, there's just the two. So the smallest possible number of coins to make two cents is two. Now let's try to make three cents. 
We're going to follow the same process, so let's start with the one cent coin. Can I make three cents using the one cent coin? Yes, but only if I start with two cents. And actually, really quick, just to make it clear what these numbers are, I'm just going to add a little cent symbol. This way we know that like this two means the amount two cents, and this two means two physical coins. But anyway, we're working on three cents, so I can make three cents using the one cent coin by adding this one coin to however many coins were required to make two cents. So there were two coins required to make two cents, plus this one coin, meaning that it would take three coins to make three cents if I use this one cent coin. Now let's move on to the next one. Can I make three cents using the three cent coin? Yes, I can as long as I start with zero cents. So the number of coins required to make three cents with this one would be this one coin plus the number of coins required to make zero cents. So that's this one coin plus zero. One plus zero is one. So I'll put a one here. And then finally, we cannot make three cents using the four cent coin. So we'll just mark that off. And now for the target amount of three cents, I take the minimum of these three values. That's the one. So the best case scenario to make three cents would be to use one coin. You can do it with three coins, but it's better to use one coin. We're going to take the minimum. All right. Now that we've reached the target of four cents, this might make a little more sense since I'm cents. <laughs> this might make a little more sense since I'll now be using all three coins. So first of all, can I make four cents using the one cent coin? Yes, but only if I start with three cents. So to make four cents, I need this one coin plus the coins required to make three cents. One plus one, and so that's two. Can I make four cents using the three cent coin? Yes, but only if I start with one cent, four minus three. To make four cents with the three cent coin, I need this one coin plus the coins required to make one cent, one plus one, and so that's two. Can I make four cents using the four cent coin? Yes, as long as I start with zero cents. So take this one coin, add it to the coins for zero cents, one plus zero, and that's one. What value goes here? The smallest value in this row. So the best case scenario to make four cents is I only need one coin. Now let's try five cents. Can I make five cents with the one cent coin? Yes, as long as I start with four cents. So I take this one coin to make four cents, plus the one coin I just added, one plus one is two. Can I make five cents using the three cent coin? Yes, as long as I start with two cents. How do I make two cents? That requires two coins, plus this coin means three coins required to make five cents. Can I make five cents using the four cent coin? Yes, if I start with one cent. Take the one coin required to make one cent plus this coin, meaning I now require two coins. So how many coins do I need to make five cents? The best case scenario is I need two coins. Either one of these, it's a tie. So let's put a two here. All right, now finally, let's get to six cents. This is our overall target and this is our final answer. So can I make six cents using the one cent coin? Yes, by starting with five cents. It takes two coins to make five cents, plus this one means it takes three coins to make six cents. Can I make six cents using the three cent coin? Yes, if I start already with three cents. So take this one coin required to make three cents, plus this coin, meaning I need two coins to make six cents. Can I make six cents using the four cent coin? Yes, as long as I start with two cents. So take the two coins required to make two cents plus this coin to reach six, meaning I need three coins. So what goes here? The smallest value of these. So that would be the two. I will place a two here. And since six is my target amount, I return two coins as my final answer. Now I wanna show you one more situation. What if my target amount was three cents and I only have two cent coins. Well, what would happen then? So first of all, we establish our base case. If I'm trying to make zero cents, I definitely require zero coins. And now I go to one cent and I ask, with my only available coin, the two cent coin, can I make one cent 
no, I actually can't. And there are no other coins to check. So if I don't get a valid answer for this problem, for the leak code version of the problem, they want a negative one if it turns out that it's impossible to get that amount. But using a negative one is going to mess us up here because remember, we're trying to take the smallest possible value and put it in here. And negative one is kind of smaller than all of the possible values I could calculate. So I don't want to use negative one. Instead, I'm going to use an impossibly large value in the array. So that could be like integer dot max value. Or in the case of three cents, I mean, four coins is technically impossible, right? If you're only trying to make three cents, you can't possibly do four coins. So maybe in my array, when I'm coding this, I'll use a four, like whatever the amount is, plus one. For the sake of my table, since I'm not actually coding right now, I'm just going to put an X. So an X will just show that it is impossible to reach that amount. Now let's try two cents. Is it possible to make two cents with a two cent coin? Yes, as long as you start with zero cents. So take the coins required to make zero cents, that's zero, plus this coin, zero plus one, and it takes one coin to make two cents. Now let's try to make three cents. Can I make three cents with a two cent coin? Well, technically yes, as long as I start with one cent. So I take the coins required to make one cent and oh, whoops, it's actually not possible. And so because of that, it is therefore also impossible to get three cents. So I'm just gonna have to put an X here. And since the target is three and that's supposed to be my final answer, it is an impossible answer. So I would return whatever the problem tells you to return in a situation where it's impossible. In the case of leak code, it says to return negative one. And if you wanted to keep this going, like say you wanted the target to actually be five cents. So I'll just do this really quickly. Four cents and five cents. Can I make four cents with a two cent coin? Yes. Start with two cents. That takes one coin plus this coin. So that's two. Can I make five cents with a two cent coin? Yes. If I start with three cents, the coins required to make three cents. Oh, wait, you can't make three cents. Therefore, you can't make five cents. And that's basically how it would work. Alright, this little guy just showed up at my house. I don't know what to do with him. He doesn't have a name yet. There's Lucky. You ready to code some job? No, he's ready to eat. Alright, well, there's only one thing left to do. Let's code some job. Alright, so I've got the start of my solution here, and the first thing I do is I set an int variable called max, and I just set it to amount plus one. You can really set it to any large value, like say integer dot max value. I'm using amount plus one because I know that this is an impossible number of coins. For example, say the target amount were 30. I know for a fact that it is impossible to use 31 coins to make 30 cents. So this way, if I see that value 31 later on, I know that there's a problem and I need to do something about it. Now, the next part of my code, I'm going to set up my dynamic programming array. So here's my int array DP, and it's going to be an int array of size amount plus one. The next thing I'm gonna do is fill the array with that max value that I have in line three. And then I establish my base case, my DP at index zero, will be zero because if I had a target amount of zero cents, it would require zero coins to reach that target. Next, I've got my for loop. It's gonna go from i equals zero until I reach the end of the DP array. So i is less than dp.length. And then for each of those target values, I'm gonna look at each coin. So for int coin in coins, I'm gonna check if the current coin is actually possible to use. And so that's this line here. If coin is less than or equal to i, so if I'm currently at the target value of three cents, I know that I can only use coins that are three cents or less. I can't use a four cent coin to make three cents. So that's what this check is for. And then if I do have a coin that is valid to use, then I'm here at this line. There's a lot of stuff here, so let's just break it down one piece at a time. So dp of i, or the solution to this problem, or this subproblem, like I showed on paper, to make this value, I need to use one coin plus whatever the answer was for I minus coin. So if I'm trying to make five cents using a one cent coin, 
it's going to be one coin plus whatever the answer was for four cents. So I'm going to do this for every coin. So I'm going to get multiple answers. Which one do I pick? I pick whichever one is the smallest. So every time I check a valid coin, I'm going to also check if the answer I just calculated is currently the minimum. So I'm going to compare it to what I have now, dp of i, and if 1 plus dp of i minus coin is smaller, then that will be my new value for dp of i. And if it turns out that I never hit this if statement, like if none of the coins are actually possible to use, then dp of i will remain max from line 3. It'll remain that impossible number. And so when we're done with this, we need to return something. We're going to return dp of amount, or the last value in the array. That will be our final answer, but we have to make sure that it's not that impossible value from line 3. So I did it as a ternary statement here. You could do it as an if and then an else, if that makes more sense to you. Basically, what I did was I do a check to see if dp of amount is not equal to max. If it's not equal to max, that means my value is actually valid, so just return dp of amount. But if it is equal to max, that means I have an impossible amount in my array, therefore it is impossible to make this amount using the given coins, and the problem says in that case to return negative 1. Alright, so that's it for this video. Please make sure to subscribe to the channel. If you have a question or a comment, put it down below. And that's it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.